Okay, Math 31, we're back with example 10. So let's read through this. We've got a 529 plan is a college savings plan that allows relatives to invest money to pay for a child's future college tuition. The account grows tax-free. Lily wants to set up a 529 account for her new granddaughter and wants the account to grow to $40,000 over 18 years. She believes the account will earn 6% compounded quarterly, which means four times a year, to the nearest dollar how much will Lily need to invest into the account now? So this is a slightly different question, but let's see if we can figure out what numbers I gave you. So Lily's going to do some sort of 529 plan. She wants to set up a, a savings plan, a college savings plan for her granddaughter. And you see here, she wants the account to grow to 40000 so on the back end of things, she wants to have 40000 She doesn't have 40000 now. She wants Lily to have 40000 Excuse me. She wants her granddaughter to have 40000 in 18 years. So this 40000 is actually my A value this time out. We see here 18 years. That's how long this account is going to be open. So once her granddaughter turns 18, she can get the money. She's going to earn 6% interest, or at least she thinks it's going to be 6% interest. And keep in mind, we need to write that up as a decimal. And I'm going to get interest compounded quarterly, which means four times a year. Okay, so what letter am I missing in this case? I'm missing P. So let's go use our formula and solve for P this time out. All right. So this time I know 40,000 is going to be equal to P times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4. And then N was 4 and T was 18. Now, like I warned you in example 9, I'm not going to round off any of my answers until the bitter end. I know I have exponential growth here because I see my equilibrium of 1 and then I'm adding to it. So I have a slight growth rate. Let's just see what it is. Even though I'm not going to round it, I do want to see what it is. So 0.06 divided by 4, I'm growing at about 1.5% per year. Okay, so with this, we're going to have 40,000 is equal to P times, all right, let's do this. We had 1 plus 0.06 divided by 4. That actually cuts off as a decimal, right? I just see it as 1.015. So I will put that in here. 4 times 18 is 72. All right, so I want to solve for P. I'm going to do a little PEMDAS first, so I'm going to do the exponents. So we've got 40,000 P. All right, we're going to do 1.015. Whoops, not divided by, but raised to the 72 power. We've got about... 200, or it's not 200, 2.921. I'm going to keep that number in my calculator, but I'm going to write 2.921 here. If I wanted to solve for P, I would divide both sides by 2.921. So let's see what P is going to be equal to. Now again, I'm not going to use 2.921. I'm going to use this entire decimal. I don't want to cut my answer off until the bitter end. So I'm going to do 40,000 and I'm going to divide it by the previous answer. And when I hit enter, I'm looking at about $13,693.20. So it looks like Lily needs $13,693.20 now so that her granddaughter can have $40,000 by the time she turns 18, okay? All right, so we've got a, a couple of examples now with compound interest, compounded at certain times per year. We're gonna move over to continuously compound interest in the next page, and we're gonna introduce the number E. I'll see you in a bit, bye.